Okay. Only Bitcoin is decentralized. Uh, nothing else is. Fiat money is not, gold is not, and the altcoin, certainly no altcoin is decentralized. Only Bitcoin is truly decentralized. China's overly mining, too much mining in, Bi in Bitcoin. It's too centralized. Okay, well, now that's no longer true anymore. It's being dispersed. It's being decentralized. Exactly as the game theory baked into the Bitcoin protocol would tell you would happen, has happened. As I said, would happen five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. I said that decentralization was always going to hew toward more decentralization. So China's out of the picture. Their own central bank digital currency is just more central centralized garbage it doesn't compete with bitcoin it's just another version of their own fiat money that they're just doing digitally the stock doesn't compete with bitcoin they will be plowing back into bitcoin at five to six hundred thousand dollars a coin you know china made a strategic error right now geopolitically but it's great for uh, el salvador it's great for guatemala it's great for paraguay it's great for mexico because they're going to inherit this uh, monetary network at a great price so remember, that has been compounding at 200% a year for 10 years. I still have a $220,000 target for Bitcoin in 2021. Well, I want to know, you have this big, bold forecast of 220000 Yeah. You were hoping for November. Have you since adjusted? No. I, I saw the same thing in uh, 2013 and again in uh, another uh, period where you had a 5, 6, 7x move in, in a compressed amount of time. So uh, I still have that target. Um, you know, the, the fundamentals okay. that, are, that apply to Bitcoin are only getting stronger. And um, people are, I think, under or you know, not pricing in this news about sovereign states making Bitcoin legal tender. I mean, <laughs> this is the first, you know, Bitcoin separates state from money. Uh, you know, in the case of El Salvador, it'll be running parallel with the dollar. And but the individuals have the right to take control of their own private keys. It's outside of the state's control. Same thing everywhere. And the, the government makes a good point. They're saying, why should we be in the business of the central bank business? We can outsource that to Bitcoin and we can, and we can use geothermal, which is free and ecologically sound. And we can do other stuff with our time as a government. Government shouldn't be wasting their time trying to monkey around with monetary policy. It's a complete waste of, of government's time. Just outsource your monetary policy to Bitcoin and work on something else. Build roads, take out trash, do something that governments are good at. You know, uh, don't focus on monetary policy. Governments are horrible at monetary policy. There, at this point, there's no difference between the United States and the Soviet Union in terms of monetary policy right now. They have a, you have a Politburo of decision makers making horrible decisions based on price signals that are concocted out of horrible feedback, out of horrible price signals, and they're both going to go the exact same way into the trash bin of history because they have no monetary policy because they're run by kleptocrats and geriatric, senile old idiots, and they're just going to be die on the vine. And these and these countries run by young, enterprising entrepreneurs like El Salvador and others are going to be like, we'll, we'll take it. We'll, we'll run the world. Thank you very much. And Bitcoin yeah. is our standard. It's no mistake. After the Monroe Doctrine and the, the U.S. turning the southern states, the Latin America and right. Central America into a slave labor market and cheap uh, commodities uh, using the dollar. Read John Perkins book. Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Washington, D.C., the CIA would send guys down there and load them up with debt. And if you don't pay the debt, we'll throw you out of an airplane. That's been America's foreign policy in the region for decades. Now these countries are saying, hey, you know what? I think we'll opt out. Thank you very much, but we don't need you. Because now we have Bitcoin, as I predicted and a few others predicted. The, the whole question was never, when will governments ban Bitcoin? The whole question is, which governments will start to adopt Bitcoin and you get into this hash war? You get into competitive uh, government acquisition mode. Like we need as much Bitcoin as possible. You see the, the New York, they're having a mayoral race right now. The guy who's leading the race said, oh, to heck with Miami, because Miami has declared itself a, the Bitcoin capital of America under its mayor. It's saying we're going to be the Bitcoin capital of America. New York City is going to be the Bitcoin capital of America, according to the mayoral candidate. He just came out with that this week. Right. So that's what I've been saying is going to happen. There's going to be competition to get the most Bitcoin, mine Bitcoin and get the most businesses of Bitcoin businesses. That's what we're going to see happening. It's called game theory. It's baked into the protocol since day one. And now it's playing out on the sovereign level, as we predicted for many years. So there's not going to be any banning of Bitcoin. There's going to be those countries that are smart enough to get in now 
and uh, reap the benefits. And then those countries that will wait and be, um, you know, suffering. Yeah. It will be really interesting to see who will be added uh, next to the list. Well, so clearly in the region, uh, as I said, Paraguay just came out today and said we're joining. Uh, right. My my understanding is that Guatemala is ready to go. So uh, it's when you. But I mean, like a European country, if someone like a country in Europe were to come out and say it, you know, that would be huge. Right. What you know, they can't afford not to. That's the way game theory works. If if these countries start to develop sound currency and sound currency policies, and you know, El Salvador's GDP is going to triple, property prices are up, people are moving there, and um, this has all happened very quickly. So if you have a country and your GDP is suffering and your fiat money is deteriorating, uh, you're, you're going to uh, be tempted into the Bitcoin uh, standard. To, to take advantage of that. Which country in Europe? I thought that, uh, you know, Iran would be a, a candidate to mm -hmm. go Bitcoin. They already mm -hmm. have like four and a half percent of the hash rate right now, from what I understand. Uh, obviously, Russia, they totally got out of dollars. They sold, they dumped their last dollars out of their reserves. They have no more dollars. So they are free to do something smart, like do what Paraguay, uh, what El Salvador just did, go to a Bitcoin standard. Uh, India is also possibly, uh, you know, they go vacillating back and forth. So India, Russia uh, are two prime candidates. And uh, in, in Europe, because of the dominance of the ECB, and when I talked to you in January, I said the ECB was the most corrupt central bank in the world. Christy Lagarde is an absolute disaster. And I predicted that would be the first major central bank to go under. And I still think that that's true. The European Central Bank is is going to go under and then these countries are going to be fending for themselves and then you'll have them uh, when they get uh, split off they'll the, some of them will break off and say hey we're going to go to a bitcoin standard but right now they're still under the influence of the european central bank which is an atrocious absolutely ungodly institution that's causing untold harm and damage all over the eu uh, under christine lagarde and uh, so they that that's the problem that they have right now